I am a data hoarder. I've got a Synology NAS here that's got over 10 terabytes worth of data. And that's all the stuff like my Azure Academy videos, backups of all of my computers, personal stuff across all of my family, and I've got a extremely large Plex Media Library. Of course, my internet upload speed, that's 25 megabit. And after two full years of backing up 24 seven up to the cloud, I've only got about 12% of it up there, which means that all my stuff is at risk from fire, flood, or my NAS just failing. But today, I'm done waiting. So how are we gonna get terabytes worth of data up to the cloud overnight when I've got an internet speed that's stuck back in 2003? When planning your large data copies and migrations, you should be asking four questions. How much data do you have? How fast does that data change? How fast is your upload speed? And how much time do you have to get all this done? And if the numbers are all manageable, then going over the wire is your best bet. If not, you're gonna need one of these. Azure Data Box is a rugged, tamper-proof storage appliance. You order it straight from Microsoft, then when you get it, you unbox it, connect it to your network, and copy all your data locally onto it. Your data all gets secured with AES-256 encryption, and you can even use your own keys. Then you send it back to Microsoft, and they'll upload it to your storage accounts directly. Then when they're done, they'll use the NIST SP8088 Rev1 standard to wipe and secure the entire device and send it out for the next customer. And that way, your data is safer than all the gold they want you to believe is still in Fort Knox. Here in the Azure portal, search at the top for Data Box. Then you click right over here and create an order. Select if this is an import or an export job, which is a nice feature. Then pick your subscription, resource group, and source country, and then the destination Azure region, which you want to put that data in, which is a new and very convenient feature because you can be anywhere in the world and have your data land in East US. Click Next, and these are the different data box options that are available from a single 35 terabyte disk all the way up to a 525 terabyte unit. Now the 120 and 525 use RAID 5 along with all that disk encryption to protect your data locally, and these numbers are the actual usable storage space that you'll get and your target for all of this data could be your storage blobs, files, managed disk, or even Azure Data Lake. And these units all have TPM 2.0 chips and security benefits like secure boot and intrusion detection. And you can see all the pricing details right over here. So you get the data box for a certain number of days all included in the cost. And if you do need to go over that, there's a daily fee. And the shipping costs here are also accounted for. Give your import order a name, and then on the data destination page, select if you want to send your data into a storage account or a managed disk, and you can even select both. Then just pick the storage account that you want to use. And this will set up multiple file shares in the data box itself for blob, page, and files, and it'll do that for each storage account that you select. And that way, everything's mapped in the data box to exactly the way you want it presented back in the cloud. And you can also select this button if you want to have an archive share. And just to understand here, archive is stored offline and will take some time to rehydrate that data and there are some fees involved. So my quick math on storing my 10 terabytes in the cloud, we have hot, cool, and archive. And that shows even with the hydration fees that archive is going to be 48% cheaper than cool storage but you're not gonna be able to do delta syncs of your data into archive. And if you need to move something into archive after the initial sync into the cloud in hot or cool, just mark it as archive, and then it'll shift over there. On the security page, all your data is encrypted with AES-256 and with Microsoft keys by default, but you can select a customer encryption key. And that will require an Azure Key Vault and a user ID. And Microsoft will use that info to decrypt the data when they go to upload. Next, we have your password options to access the device and the shares. And they, of course, need to meet Microsoft's normal complexity standards. And you have the option to also select a double encryption using BitLocker for your high security environments. On the contact tab, 
you can have Microsoft take care of the shipping of the data box for you, or you can actually have somebody pick it up through your own carrier. Just provide your physical address and up to 10 email addresses that you want notified of all of this. Then click next and add all your tags like all Azure experts do, and then review everything and click to create your order. In a minute or two, you'll get an email confirming everything, and you can constantly go back to the Azure portal here at your data box and check your order status. And shortly after I placed the order, I received my data box. Just open it up and remove the protective foam, and you'll wanna keep all of this for when we repackage. Just lift it out by the handles. You got your power button here in the front, and then you plug in your power and network in the rear. And each of the data ports here will be getting a DHCP address on your network. Or you could just go into the Azure portal here and look up the data box device details. Scroll down to the bottom and there are the MAC addresses for your specific device. And then you can pre-assign them addresses in your environment if you need to. Now, data one and data two ports use QSFP plus and you'll need an adapter for those. Now the data three and management, that's 10 gig. So I'm gonna just plug a regular ethernet in there and then I've got a SFP 10 gig adapter for my Ubiquiti switch because uh, that's a link aggregator that supports 10 gigabit. And now that I've got it all connected here, check out my console. These are all of the different devices across my network. And here on my aggregation switch, we can go right over here to this port and there's our data box and there's our IP and Mac. And then we can connect to our data box. To get that started, you need to go back to the Azure portal and go to your data box, grab the password here, then pull up a web browser and go to the IP of your specific data box. The warning you'll get here is normal because we're connecting by IP and the built-in cert is using the microsoftdatabox.com domain. So just click advanced here and then proceed. Sign in with the password from the portal and you're in. Now you wanna to go to connect and copy on the left. And there are the storage accounts and the shares set up according to your order along with the network protocols that work with the data box. Now there's two different ways that you can do your data copies. And the first way is just navigate to the file explorer, drop in your IP for your data box and you've got your shares. And then you can just copy the data over just like anything else. Now my plan is to put my media collection into the archive because I don't really need that synced on a regular basis. And then I've got all of my videos and personal family stuff that I wanna have using my sync so that'll go into hot and cool storage appropriately. Now the downside to doing it this way is if you got your data on a server and then you've got your client device you're connecting with and then you've got your data box, in order to get the stuff onto the data box, you're actually relaying that data through your client. So it's really two network copies. And that's good for a small amount of stuff, but the best way to do it for a large amount of data is just have data box do the work for you. Go to copy data on the left and then you can create a new job. Give it a name, select all of your source info and credentials, and the particular destination and share. And you can also find things more particularly using regular expressions. Find the particular file types or folders that you want in all of that data, and then just ship it to the data box. Now, once all your copying is complete, you're gonna to wanna to open the data box console again, and then go to prepare and ship on the left. Then you just click start preparation. Now, how long this takes is gonna depend on all of the data that you have, but once it's complete, you can download a list of everything that you've put on the data box, so that way you can validate you get everything that you wanted when you go up to the cloud, and then you can click shut down right up here. Pack the unit and all of the protective foam back into the box, and then notify Microsoft to come and pick it up. Now, once your data box arrives, Microsoft will plug it into their storage network, and then start copying the data directly to the cloud. Now that my 10 terabytes is finally backed up, I know I feel a lot better. But if you want another way to migrate to the cloud with zero downtime, you should check out this video. And happy learning.